filmmakers and welcome back to another studio vlog. How are you all doing? I hope that you've had a good couple of weeks. It's been an extra week than usual since I visited with you last. I'm Joanna. Welcome if you are new. This is Stitching the High Notes, a YouTube channel all about knitting and sewing and stitching and a look behind the scenes of my creative online business where I make project bags for makers. And my hope is through these vlogs to encourage you to nourish your creativity and to stitch some joy into your everyday life. I've been doing really well. Again, I hope that you have been well. I uh, took last week off kind of last minute in terms of vlogging because honestly, I have been feeling an uh, uptick in anxiety and overwhelm big time. And with that comes, um, it puts a ding in your creativity. And I felt like I was kind of sharing the same old things over and over again. <laughs> and I just felt like I needed to take a a step back and kind of sit with my feelings, kind of assess what was going on. I know so many of us are feeling the same, which is why I'm mentioning it, just to say that you're not alone. It happens every once in a while and in cycles. And I was taking a look back at some of my past journal entries. I'm really grateful that I keep a journal and can kind of search by year. It kind of gives me a uh, I use an app called Day One. I have for many years um, that uh, it'll show you kind of like on this day, four years ago or five years ago, this is what you were journaling about. And around this time of year, it always seems to be, uh, I have a sense of overwhelm. There's like a um, kind of my empath so I'm kind of like on empath overload for a variety of reasons. There's a big shift in uh, the energy and kind of rhythm of life with spring. Um, in the past, there, it's been when productions have picked up again for spring season um, and my schedule has kind of shifted in some way. And that's still happening to some extent, even though I'm not singing uh, act as actively or actively anymore as a professional, but I still work in the arts and we are doing live shows. We just opened a, an opera last night, so in, in an outdoor venue. So yeah, so it's just, a, it's a, a natural thing. It's a thing that happens, but I find that I always have to kind of take a step back and kind of make sure I'm not I'm paying attention to what's going on. Um, and yeah, so it's kind of put a, a ding in some of the things that I'd set out to achieve or wanted to do throughout the month of April or in terms of kind of like the workflow that I hope to establish for myself. And um, it's compounded with the news. I mean, I'm not going to go through the laundry list, but don't worry. But uh, compounded with the news, it's been a really heavy couple of weeks, few weeks here in America. And uh, of course, elsewhere, but especially where I live uh, right now. And um, but it's also mixed with some really awesome things as well, too. So it's a mixed bag. But uh, through it all, they're I'm making sure to really take stock of the joy of each day. That really helps to ground myself. Take walks, listen to beautiful birds outside. Which I'm just gonna open my door so you can hear them pause for a bird. Of course, now they're not going to sing. Yeah. There you go. There's a little owl out there, or a pigeon too. <laughs> but yeah, it's kind of just doing that and, um, you know, still doing yoga and all that stuff. So anyway, but there's been knitting and sewing and I do have a lot to share with you today. It is Saturday as well, so I wanted to take you along on a typical Saturday, which is after the work week where I kind of flex my creativity muscles a little bit more and do a few more things. I have an update on my tender sweater here to show you in a second, as well as a new cast on a new project, which I'm so excited about because it's been way too long for a new knitting project. I'm going to do a sock project as kind of a palette cleanser. And also uh, show you at the end of the vlog uh, a preview of the bags, the new bag collections that are coming to the shop on Saturday, May 1st, if you are interested. Uh, and yeah, we'll see what else we get up to today. I think definitely taking a walk outside as well. So the tender sweater. Oh my goodness. So I'm going to show you right here what it looks like right now on. I finished the first sleeve and um, 
and I have a story about it in the first sleeve. I had to tink back and redo it a little bit. And then I now have this second sleeve, I think about three fourths of the way done. I have, I think three or four, I think I have three more, four, no, three more, no, four more, <laughs> four more decrease rounds and then the cuff to do. So sadly, it's not going to be a finished object, a finished sweater for this vlog, but definitely next week, I think, uh, because I still have the collar to do as well. So the tender sweater is a, a pattern by Melody Hoffman. Um, wonderful, beautiful Melody Hoffman. Uh, I am using yarn by the Royal Bee Yarn Company. It is a DK weight yarn, 100% fine merino. Here's one of the last skeins that I have. I'm down to two skeins. This is the one that I wound up in the last vlog. Um, and this is the second of the two uh, kind of leftover skeins that I had from the body of the sweater. I finished up the second the other skein uh yesterday or the day before that was kind of in between these two shades of of um gray so this is the lighter one but as you will see here in a second it's still looking pretty good um i'm really glad that i decided to tink back when i had cast on the sleeve um last vlog to alternate the skein so that it kind of evened out the gray these are hand dyed um and so they are just yeah beautifully beautifully dyed there's a lot of tonality and um it's really dynamic the color in uh various sunlights and and various lighting so here is the second sleeve as it stands now. In general, the fit, I'm really, really happy with how the sleeves are fitting. Um, I got to, picked up the stitches to the amount per the pattern. Uh, they are a little tight, but I'm really happy because once the sweater is blocked and you wear and move your arms around a lot, um, it's gonna have like the perfect amount of ease that I like for my sleeves. And it still looks really good with the ease that is um, throughout the sweater, throughout the body of the sweater. Uh, for the first sleeve, I did tink back. So I got to, I'll show you a picture here. I got to just above the wrist which is where kind of the bone of the wrist which is where I want it to sit the cuff and uh, I was only going to have like an inch of of the ribbed cuff which is a one by one rib and I decided after chatting with a bunch of my stitchy friends um, to tink back they suggested tinking back to the last two decrease lightning bulb stitch markers which are marking my decrease rows um, so like say I was like, I was here and ready to do the cuff. I actually tinked back to like here, to the second one. Not on this one, but on the other one. <laughs> uh, and that was perfect. And that meant that I actually was just, I had four more stitches total than the um, final amount of stitches that the pattern says you should have, um, but it's fine. It still fits perfectly. And then I did two and a half, um, inches of ribbed. I think it came out to like 16 inch, 16 rows of rib for the cuff. And I love it. I started the second sleeve this week and uh, really got to knitting fully on it on Thursday because I took the beginning of the week to kind of focus on bags a little bit. I'm trying to get a head start on bags uh, since I'm getting my second shot on Monday uh, for Moderna shot and I'm expecting to be out of commission for a couple of days, a few days. Uh, so I wanted to get a head start and get the bulk of the bags done for the most part. And I'm picking up, I kind of lost steam because of kind of having that big case of anxiety and overwhelm the last couple of weeks. So I think we're back in the flow of things. I'm hesitant to say on track. I'm more about like go with the flow. Keeping track on time here because in five minutes I'm going to be chatting with my Patreon peeps. I can't wait to catch up with them. So the second sleeve is coming along three, four ish away through. I've been using uh, oh, I better put my stoppers on. I'm using these little stoppers all the time. You'll see me by Coco Knits. And this is something you 
put on the end of your needles. They have various sizes for whatever size needle you're using um, to make sure your stitches don't come off the needles, which I have done several times. Uh, I'm using 12 inch circulars for the first time. I'm really, really enjoying these. I've used nine inch circular needles for socks off and on. Um, but I haven't done it for sleeves before. I usually do magic loop and I really enjoy this, especially because I'm doing the helical knitting technique or the jogless join um, to alternate skeins. Uh, and it just makes it that much easier to do than with magic loop, in my opinion, when you're knitting in the round. Um, and I, yeah, I am converted. I'm using the Chow Gu needles and I really love the cable and I really like this um, kind of bend in the needle right here near the join and that allows for a lot of ease uh, for a small amount of needles as I decrease um, as I'm knitting in the round. I really, really like that. I kind of like, why don't they do that on socks? But I guess you don't really need them on socks. I don't know. Um, I really love the Chow Goos. I love, I'm just a real convert for Chow Goos. Um, I love the cable. They're not as um, stiff as they used to be back in the day. I don't know if they shifted things but or I've gotten used to it. And I really like the metal. It just has the right amount of grip. It's not too slidey. I mean, it depends on your project. Sometimes you need, depending on the yarn and the materials that you're using, um, you need something with a little bit more stickiness or give. Um, but I feel like in general, these are my go-to stickiness. <laughs> um, what else to say? So yeah, I'm going to keep chugging along on the sweater. I mentioned I have a Zoom chat here in a minute. So um, I'll be seeing how far I can get here on the sleeve. I still have to do the collar. And I've been keeping it. I'll just show you here i haven't really fully to its full extent used one of my sweater bags that i keep in the shop this is my sweater bag design and i have to say i'm really enjoying it <laughs> feels so weird to say that but it's just a really great lovely size and it keeps it all nice and tidy and next to my chair over there um and yeah i'm really looking forward there are still a few uh from the bunnies in the garden collection uh in the shop if you're interested but i will be showing you some more that are coming to the shop in a couple weeks to, or at the end of this week on saturday may 1st so but as i said I have two minutes now I need to get to this chat. I'm gonna warm up my coffee, uh, get some water as well, and I'm gonna take you through the day. I'm actually gonna cast on some socks. Um, so I'm gonna go pick out some yarn and I'll chat with you more about that in a bit. Take a walk outside and um, yeah, let's, let's have a fun Saturday together. It is about 2 p.m. now and I've done a really good solid day of for a weekend of work on the bags for the next update. I'm gonna stop uh, there and switch back to knitting. I really want to cast something on and yes I still need to finish my sleeve. I did make a lot of good progress during the stitch and chat earlier this morning but I am actually going to be chatting with a friend here in about an hour and that would be the perfect time to continue with the sleeve and see how far I can get with that since it's just knitting in the round and minus an odd decrease here and there. I don't have to think a lot. I can chat while doing it. But I do want to cast on some socks and I'm going to try a new pattern uh, to me and a new type of toe, which I'm really excited about. So first I will tell you about that, but let's choose some yarn from my stash. I'm so excited to go shopping. <laughs> we are on the hunt for some yellow yarn. So this is a possibility, I think. I don't want to take the ball band off. Oh, classic woolen vine. The gory details. This was a sock club that she did, oh, I think 2016 or something. Kind of yellow. Has a lot of colors in there, though. So I'm going to put this one back for these particular. I'm looking for like a nice sunny summery. 
Uh, this one is Elm Tree Yarns. Uh, this is, I think this has to do with the White Princess, the White Queen. Oh yeah, the White Queen, which was is a series on stars. Uh, so this is Deep Stash as well. But this is actually designated, if my mom is still mom, let me know. <laughs> uh, she kind of wants me to make a hat out of this, like a beret. I think we chose a pattern a couple of years ago, about a year ago, pre pre-pandemic times. Um, but it's a Grello colorway. It's really pretty. Uh, there's some other possibilities in here though. Let's see what this one is. This is again, other colors, not really yellow, but a, oh, so pretty. Lolo did it. What is this one? Oh yeah. I can't remember what that stands for. Knitting friends are the best friends, I think. Isn't it amazing our memories when they're attached to yarn? Oops yarn down. I have to go get that one. <laughs> um, let's go to the other side of this because I think there's more but before I do that let's go to the, the next cube. Of course there is this amazing yellow which is the pencil yarn by the Yarn Enabler. I got this about I think also 2016. A good chunk of my stash is from when I started podcasting and really falling in love with Indie dyed yarn. So like 2016, 2017 is I still have a lot of stash to get through or de-stash eventually. This is all stuff that I would like to keep. I probably should go through it again. I went through it I think in January of last year um, and then everything that I'm going to be kind of getting rid of or de-stashing or selling or whatever is in the, the top bins right here. But yeah, but this isn't necessarily what I'm going for. This is something I want to do for my sissy still, uh, my sister, because uh, she's a teacher and it's so cool. It's like a, this is the pencil and then the minis are like the cuffs, I think are the um, erasers. So this looks like the eraser and then like the metal part and then the eraser is the pink. And then this is the lead and the wood part for the toe. So yeah, oh, I still want to do that one too. Gotta be careful, I'm gonna go through my whole stash with y'all. <laughs> Here is a really beautiful yellow. I think this is from my friend Gabby, uh, formerly Once Upon a Corgi, now she is known as Plies and Hellhound. Plies and Hellhounds. Um, this colorway is Roly Poly Pudding, so very appropriate. This, I believe, is a um, uh, Beatrix Potter colorway. So I'm gonna put this aside because this is a cool, idea. It's also singles, which might be really cool. A single ply, which might be really cool to knit some socks with. I haven't done that in quite some time. And then let's see, what else do we have here? I think that's all for yellow on this. Oh, you're down. Let me go to the other side. Okay. I see these two right here and they're kind of buried in there. So I don't have an avalanche. I'm going to grab them out and show you what they look like. Here were the two I was pointing to. Actually, this is not as yellow as I thought. This is actually junk yarn, a Leah. This is a Leia rather a colorway based on Star Wars. This is more of a cream color, and I kind of want this to be part of a cowl or something. I think I have another Star Wars colorway that I want to add with this, but it does have like a little pop of like neon yellow in there, which is really cool. But this beauty is by a former dyer, Maker's Haven, uh, Amber. And this is, I think, the Luna colorway, isn't it? Yellow dresses, yes. So this is um, themed after her first novel that she wrote a couple years ago, I believe. And really, really pretty. So I think it's between these two. Uh, I'm really drawn to this one because it's of the like added little bit of color here. But I think because this is Beatrix Potter themed and I'm intrigued to make some socks with some single ply yarn, I think we're gonna do this beauty. Yay! Very exciting. It is such a rush to pick out yarn and cast something on. <laughs> what is it about this magical thing. It's the same as picking out colors for a new painting. Oh, love it. So I am going to be casting on a new pattern to me. I just purchased it. It is by Jules Hill uh, from So Sweet Violet. It is her Sweet Vanilla Socks 
and it's a new, uh, she uses a toe and a heel that I have never done before. It's a beanie toe and a go day heel. So I'm really looking forward to it. I'll show you pictures here of the toe and of the heel close up so you can kind of see. And of course the link will be down below as well. It's a toe up pattern, which is perfect for me because that's my preferred way of knitting socks. And I think because I'm using single ply, we're gonna try it out with my usual uh, 2.25 millimeter. I do it so much I never think about the size of needles uh, that I use, but I think I'm going to use my 2.25 uh, millimeter needles um, because, yeah, maybe I might need to go down if it's a single ply, but I don't know. We'll see. We'll see how it goes. So these are going to be for my mom. I, for the most part, only make socks for my mom these days because I have a whole drawer full and I'm good to go with socks. So I'm excited to see. Um, I'm kind of going to see her in a couple of days. I'm really just going to do a pit stop <laughs> and go to the restroom when I go up to get my second shot because my shot is going to be uh, near her house up near Sacramento. Um, but a couple weeks after that, um, we already have on the books that I'm going to be going to go visit um, for a good long weekend um, to see them all. I can't wait because uh, I've been really staying away for a while because they're anyway you don't need to hear the whole spiel but by then I should have at least one of the socks done knock on wood and she can try it on and it'll be very interesting to see how she likes this different heel and uh, toe so let's wind up same yarn All set to go I love single ply yarn I know they're not the best for socks necessarily but uh, I think mom usually uses these around wears her socks around the house so I think they'll be really nice and they might be more lightweight so they might be better for the spring anyway it's already quite warm up uh, north of here and I have my needles my chow goo uh, 2.25 millimeter us1 needles I'm gonna be doing um, uh, magic loop to start with at least and then I might switch to uh, nine inch circulars at some point which I have and then I'm gonna have to pull it out because it's a Beatrix Potter themed yarn and it tis the season uh, one of my favorite bags this is uh, from Marie Celeste stitches I'll leave her Instagram handle down below I'm not sure if she makes uh, bags anymore I think she does for cross stitch and stuff um, but beautiful beautiful bag i got this several years ago and it is my fave it's like an annual tradition to use this gorgeous gorgeous thing and i don't think i mentioned earlier that this yarn is a hundred percent superwash merino uh, and there's 400 yards so yeah. so let's get cracking oh and while i am knitting i'm going to be picking up where i left off on the Shadow and Bone series. Uh, I am reading that series right now as well. And I went back and forth about whether I wanted to keep watching it because they've introduced some characters from later books that I have yet to read. But it's so good and I just, I'm gonna keep going. <laughs> and some folks have told me that actually they've made quite a, quite several differences that it's not spoilery if you still have to read the books later. So. I will trust in that and continue to read as I knit. It's 
time to chat with my friend, so I'm going to shift gears back to my sweater, but I've gotten this much done. I've got 24 uh, stitches on the needles, so I'm going for 64, so I still have some more increases to go. But it just feels so good to be working with different yarn and a different weight yarn and ply and color. <laughs> it's been a while, so yeah, I'm looking forward to continuing to work on this next week but now back to the tender sweater oh i love my friend cheryl so much it was so good to catch up with her i am going to take a quick spin around the neighborhood feel the fresh air and then come back show you where i'm at on my sleeve i'm not going to finish it today but it's, oh ever so close and uh, show you some of the bags that are coming to the shop uh on saturday was so lovely and a perfect way to start the kind of slower evening pace. So many things in bloom and some beautiful roses, so many pinks, especially on this one side of the street. And then all of a sudden some really pretty yellow roses. So that was really nice. So as promised, here is the progress on my sleeve, my second sleeve. I started the day about right here between uh, this purple stitch marker and this sil silver one. So I've knit all of this today. And looking at it, I mean, you can kind of tell around right here, I joined that newer ball of yarn. I mean, you have to really look at it. There's a little bit of striping happening or it's just really evident that there's a lighter skein of yarn right here, which is a bummer, but I'm hoping I'll just walk fast <laughs> and you can't really see it it really is like being super nitpicky about it but I I think it's still pretty good it'll be on my sleeve we'll see how it goes but I'm getting so close I have two more let me count hold on no I have two more decrease rounds to go and then I will start the cuff so I'm gonna flitter between this this evening after I'm done editing this vlog, of course, uh, as well as getting back to my sock. And I'm really excited to finish the collar on the sweater and block it. Hopefully that'll be something that I can show you all next week in next week's vlog. I also wanted to show you a preview of the bags that'll be in the shop. So this, there's, I still need to name them, but there's gonna be a gardening collection and then a spring butterflies collection. I think that'll be the name of the butterflies one. And instead of just going through all of the bags, cause there's five uh, bag types in each collection, I just kind of chose a couple of different bag types to show you. So. The gardening collection is gonna be in this duo of colors. Oh my gosh, I love it so much. Um, this is a beautiful design, the same designer that did the books and tea bags that I've had in the past. Cute little overalls and seed packets and a shovel and carrots. Oh, I love it. And I paired it with this 
Essex linen uh, bottom that's kind of like the grass, and then a brown zipper, um, which kind of is like the dirt. So it's so cute. I love it so much. So this will be in all the bag types. Um, so this is the sweater sized bag, um, the maker's briefcase, uh, the needlework pouch, the notions bag, and the drawstring bag, which here is an example of the drawstring bag. And this is the spring butterfly fabric. So pretty, love the color palette of this fabric so much. Oh, I have it paired with a black Essex linen just to allow the colors to really pop. And this is a drawstring bag. All of the bags are lined with Kona cotton, 100% cotton. And they have my little logo stamp on the inside. And then these drawstring are with cotton twill. And there is interfacing inside all of the bags, a nice quilt batting so that it's nice and sturdy and can stand up on its own. But it's also very squishable. And you can put them in your purse or your bag or your larger project bag which a lot of people do as well <laughs> so yeah so keep an eye out on um, Instagram stitching the high notes uh, for more pe sneak peeks throughout the week ahead um, and also on the website stitching the high notes.com I am gonna make some dinner I have no idea what I'm gonna make for myself I really want some cookies but I might just eat chocolate chips <laughs> Um, and I'm just going to relax the rest of the evening, get back to shadow and bone after I'm done editing and continue to chill out and um, hone the kind of resurgence I'm starting to feel again with my creativity. So I hope that you all are doing well, that you continue to do well, and I'm sending all my best to you and I will see you next week. Bye.